for the miracle of a roof over our heads, the miracle of food on our tables, clothes on our backs. We thank you, O God, because we realize that without a doubt, everything is going to be all right when we see you. O God, we come on this day to realize that we're on our way. Pilgrims traveling through a barren land knowing that this world is not our home on our way to another land not made by hands oh god in the meantime we want to celebrate you we want to worship you we want to glorify your name oh god because there ain't nobody like you and we do love you we do adore you now oh god have your own will and your way do it your way, oh God, and we'll be satisfied. Uh, whatever you decide is all right, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 John's Gospel, chapter 6, continuing from uh, Minister Phelps' reading, but verses 66 through 69. John, chapter 6, verses 66. Through 69. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Yeah. And then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon 
Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we've come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. For a few moments, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? Things have been going extremely well for Jesus. Everywhere he went, he drew large crowds. People were excited to see him as they watched his mighty works. They wanted to touch and be touched by him. People seem to hang on his every word and take notice of his smallest action. Jesus knew that people were attracted to him for various reasons. There were those who wanted something from him. There were those who were curious about him. There were those who followed any new fad for a while. There were those who were trying to trip him in his words and find fault in all that he was doing. What was important to Jesus was not that the people simply followed him, but that they followed him for the right reasons. We can follow Jesus. We can come to church and serve and worship and work in the church for the wrong reasons, as well as the right reasons. What was important to him was not that people heard his words and quoted them, but that they understood Jesus knew that his teaching would be difficult for some to understand and impossible for others to accept and believe. He didn't try to hide anything about either the difficulties or the rewards of the life he offered. Jesus was always up front and out front about the requirements of the kingdom. There were no hidden clauses in his call and no fine print in his gospel. One day, during the height of his popularity, when talk and expectations were at their greatest about making him an earthly king, Jesus delivered one of the most difficult and unpopular message, one that confused many of those who had been excited about him and had been following him. It was after the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves when Jesus' popularity seemed to be never ending, that he presented himself not as a victorious conqueror, but as an obedient, suffering servant who would give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus' teaching about giving his life with others eating his flesh and drinking his blood was a hard and difficult message to receive. Now, we need to remember that although Jesus' message was good news, and although we are called to live a a life of grace under God, Jesus still had some hard and difficult warnings. Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. 
Oh yeah, that, 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 that's a hard scene. If you don't believe it's hard, just try living it. Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Where would any of us be if God judged as harshly as we judge one another? That's why I th thank God for grace and mercy that is everlasting to everlasting. There, 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 were those, there, there were those who didn't understand what Jesus was saying and, 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 and didn't stay around long enough to find out how many of us are faithful as long as things are going our way. But when the first difficulty comes or, or the first yeah, yeah, just a uh, difficulty comes. We're ready to throw our hands up and give up. The first time our prayers uh, don't get answered the way we want. Yeah, yeah, we will quick to say, my God, my, my God, ha has thou forsaken me? Some of us become discouraged so easily and so quickly. It's, it, it's almost as if we are just looking for a reason to quit or leave the church, to, to, to stop giving, to stop working, uh, to stop serving, or, or, or to break the promises and vows we made to the Lord. We, 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 we hear and don't understand uh, our feelings get hurt. We become confused and we don't stay around long enough to get an understanding. Instead, we take our marbles and run home the first time we don't get our way. The first time our names are not called. Or the first time somebody makes us angry. The first time we are falsely accused and criticized. The first time the pastor does something we don't agree with. The first time God does something or allows something to happen that we don't understand. We walk away in disgust with broken hearts, uh, broken spirits, and broken faith. There were those who walked away not because they didn't understand what Jesus was saying, right. but because they understood all too well what Jesus was saying. They understood that they would have to change their attitudes and adopt new values. Yeah, they, they understood that they would have to make some sacrifices and take some risk for what they believe. Oh yeah, yeah, they, they understood that if they followed Jesus too closely, that the same thing that happened to him could happen to them. Yeah, they, 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 they were not ready to deny themselves or take up any crosses and follow in the way of holiness. So at this point, Jesus turns to the 12, those whom he had called to be his special companion, and asked, do you also want to go away? That's the searching question that Jesus still asks of us, and each of us must answer this question for ourselves. When others fall by the wayside, quit, resign, or leave, do you also want to go away? There'll be times when following Jesus 
will not be easy. In those times, Jesus' question for us is, will you stay with me or do you also want to go away? Sometimes, sometimes vicious people who have nothing better to do but be envious and who don't know how to do anything better will try to undermine our character and spread rumors about us. But in those times of hurt and pain, Jesus has a question for us. Will you stay with me? Or now that the going has gotten a little rough and tough, do you also want to go away? When we are not reelected or reappointed to office and we are feeling angry and vindictive, Jesus questioned for us, Will you stay with me now that you don't have your position? Or do you also want to go away? When misunderstandings come about and tempers flare and your patience runs out and we are pushed to our breaking point before we break up or break down. Jesus has a question for us. Will you stay with me through misunderstandings or do you also want to go away? Sometimes we will be criticized when we are doing the best we can. Yeah, by those who are doing nothing but talking. But in those moments when we're closest to walking out and letting the fault finders, uh, the busy bodies, uh, the know it alls, uh, take control uh, and make a bigger mess. Jesus has a question for us Will you stay with me or do you also want to go away? When Satan has taken the joy out of your worship, taken the joy out of your serving, Jesus has a question for us. Will you stay with me or do you also want to go away? When Jesus asked this question to his disciples, uh, Peter spoke up. Now, 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 there are times when Peter spoke out of turn. Peter had foot in mouth disease. Yeah, when he spoke up, he would be loud and he's wrong. You ever notice when an individual, when they are wrong, they get loud? Yeah, but, but, but this time, Peter's answer was on it because it came from his heart. Jesus' question came from the loneliness of his heart. As he saw many of his followers walk away. But, 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 but Peter's answer came from his heart. As he thought about what Jesus meant to him and the other disciples. I tell you, when you always take a second to think about what Jesus means to you, yeah, 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 it'll trigger something from your heart. Questions of, of faith, uh, questions of commitment, uh, and questions of discipleship uh, must be answered with uh, uh, the heart. Our minds can only take us so far. Logic can only take us so far. At some point, only the heart can speak. At some point, 
Only heart can respond to the word and the spirit of God. Peter answered from his heart. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Look at here. God, God, God may be doing some things or allow some things to happen that we don't understand. Oh, but to whom shall we go? Is there any one who can help us? Is there any one who, who understands our hearts uh, when the thorns of life have, have cut us right. till we bleed? Yeah. To whom shall we go when problems show up in our families? Uh, when tensions uh, come between husband and wife uh, and miss understandings come between parent and child to whom shall we go as single persons trying to make it by ourselves to whom yeah shall we go when, 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 when ways need to be made oh yeah there, there, there's, there, there's only one person yeah and, and, and we need to know who that person is uh, that one person uh, and, and, and Peter calls his name uh, Jesus yeah you, you, you have uh, the words of eternal life uh, you, 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 you have the word of salvation uh, you have the word of deliverance. Uh, you have the word uh, of, yeah, of, of healing for the sick. Uh, you have the word for, of the resurrection for the dead. Uh, but you, you not only have the word of life for this age, you have the word of eternal life. And, they say, and we believe and have come to know that you are the Christ. The son of the living God. You see, when, when, when we first started following Jesus, we believed. But now we know. We believe Jesus would take care of us. But now we know. We believe that he would put food on our tables. But now we know. We believe that Jesus would heal our bodies. Now we know. We believe that Jesus would bless us indeed. But now we know. We believe that Jesus would enlarge our territory. But now we know. We believe that Jesus would keep his hands upon us. But now we know. We believe that Jesus would keep us from evil. But now we know. We believe that Jesus would save our soul. But now we know. Well, I may not be able to answer all the questions about my faith. But all based on my own experience, I can give a suitable answer. Yeah, Lord, the Lord knew me before I knew myself. Matter of fact, he knew me when I was in my mama's womb. Hey, Lord, hey, Lord, and I didn't meet him until I was 12 years old. Hey, Lord, and I got to tell you, ever since I met him, ever since that time, the Lord, he's been with me, and I can testify every the day gets sweeter than the day before. I can testify every round goes higher and higher. I can testify I got somebody who walks with me, who talks with me. I got somebody I can call him by his name. He may not come when I want him to, but oh, he's always on time. And I 
can tell you there's some things uh, I've learned. Uh, no, there's some things uh, I know. I've come by the chain because of my experiences uh, with the Lord, uh, because of my history with the Lord, because of my relationship with the Lord. I know what the Lord can do. Yeah, Lord, I not only know that the Lord laid his hands on me, I know that the Lord will keep his hands on me. Hey, Lord, he woke me up early this morning. He brought me here this day, and he will guide me when I leave this place. Uh, I know he loves me. I just don't know why he does. But I know uh, he cares. Uh, and that's a word uh, for somebody uh, up in here. Yes, mm, the Lord, uh, he loves you. Uh, and uh, he cares for you. Uh, I know I'm right. Mm, uh, because. I know uh, that his grace mm, is sufficient. I know uh, that if I stay uh, with him, uh, he'll stay with me. I heard somebody say, Jesus say, if you lean on me, I won't let you fall. I wonder, do I have anybody up in here? Realize uh, when I lean on the Lord, he will, he will, he will, he will, he will, oh, he will not uh, let me fall. Yeah, Lord, and I know he heals, uh, I know he restores, uh, I know he makes ways. Uh, anybody up in here, can you think back? Uh, not years ago, not months ago, matter of fact, even last Monday, but early, early, early this morning, uh, the Lord, he made a way. Hey, Lord, yeah, Lord, he forgives, he saves, he sanctifies, and he satisfies. I know he is the Christ, the son of the living God. He is the Holy One. And because he's the Holy One, he deserves our very best. He deserves our highest praise. He deserves our shouting. He deserves our praises. He deserves our thank you, Jesus. He deserves on us calling him by his name. He deserves that we walk by faith and not by sight. He deserves for you to tell somebody. I know somebody who can save anybody. Hey, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Well, will you also go away? That's the question. I don't have a perfect answer but I have a sufficient answer to whom shall we go when Peter yeah he answered a question with a question hey Lord but it was all rhetorical Lord we don't have anybody else to go to I heard somebody say I searched all over couldn't find nobody. I looked high and still lower. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Yeah, Lord. Nobody greater than you, Lord. I, I wonder is there anybody else can testify, Lord. Lord. There's nobody greater than you. To whom shall we go? Thank God 
there's nobody else where could I go but to the Lord nobody 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 but the Lord there was nobody else to go to the cross for us so God sent his only begotten son nobody but his only son to die on a cross hey Lord nobody but his son to be buried in a borrowed tomb nobody but his son to stay there all night Friday all day Saturday nobody but his son Jesus who stayed there all night Saturday night but thank God thank God thank God really 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 Sunday morning he got up he got up oh, he got up oh, he got up oh, he got up for your sin and my sin to whom shall we go? Peter was saying, Lord, it ain't nobody. It ain't nobody. But the fact of it is like that Peter recognized and he made it known. They tell me it's incorrect to answer a question with a question. But Peter made his point, Lord. He said, Lord, is it something wrong? Lord, are you having a season moment? Where else couldn't we go? Not what, but to whom shall we go? It's important in your worship, in your serving in the body of Christ, you need to know and understand why you do what you do. If you do it to please somebody, if you do it to satisfy somebody, and sometimes it's just to satisfy your own ego, I come by to tell you, you're not gonna stay long. You're not gonna be rooted and grounded. You gotta know, you, you, you gotta come because you wanna worship the Lord. You, you gotta come because a charge you have to keep in a God to glorify. That, 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 that's why. Yeah. See, I, I, I want you to come, but don't come because of me. Come to, because of the one that I'm trying to point you to. I come and recognize that without the Lord, I, I can't do nothing. With him, I can do all things. Will you also go away? The reason you have to be rooted and grounded is because misery, unsatisfied folk, love company. And if they are disgruntled, if they're not satisfied, they don't want you to be. That's why when you come, you got to be careful. Even in the body of Christ, you got to be careful who you listen to. Too many of us, we're listening to the wrong voices uh, and we let it steal our joy, uh, steal our peace. Uh, and you come up in here with your, with already an attitude. Uh, you come up in here already on the defense. Uh, when you got your guards up, you can't receive what the Lord got in store for you. When you come all wound up and all tight, uh, the Lord can't use you. But oh, when I yield myself, to the Lord uh, and let him have his way. He'll restore me. He'll revive me. He'll keep me in his care and I can run on for a while longer. I'll run if I have to run by myself. To whom? we go every Sunday every worship experience before we can truly get into the worship 
there's some cleaning up that needs to be done. It's not in your neighbor. Yeah, it's not in your spouse. It's not in your children. Yeah, it, it, it's you. So when we come in, and we come in with thanksgiving, and see, I told you, when you come in with thanksgiving, you can't complain. You can't complain what others have done. You can't complain about what you don't have. But when you come in with thanksgiving, you're saying, Lord, much obliged. I, I thank you, oh God, for what you've already done. I, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. And when we come, I, I, we got our eyes focus on the Lord. Because, because what, 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 what's happening now? I, I tell you, all week long, uh, the Lord is positioning you for a praise. Uh, he's positioning you for worship. So since the benediction last Sunday, he's been getting you ready. Before you step out here, he was getting you ready for another worship service. Uh, you've been through some stuff, but you can say, look what the Lord brought me from. Uh, look what the Lord did. Uh, he brought me again. And he wants you to get up in here. And when you get here, let your joys be known. Uh, when you get up in here, let others know whose side you're on. When you get up in here, let it be known. You don't care what you've been through. You don't care what you're going through. You know if the Lord keep his hands on you, everything is going to be all right. And you come and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, much obliged. Lord, I love you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you. Time for, there's something else to worship right through. Each time you come, it's a time to recommit, rededicate. We use the word recharge. It's the same thing. The reason I would have to recharge a battery because it's dead. It is not operating on all the pores in it. When we come, there, there, there's some death because of sin in us. Oh yeah, you, you've been saved and yeah, fire baptized. Oh yeah, but we still sin. So the, the, when we come to worship, Lord forgive me. Lord, Lord make me worthy of your praise. Lord, Lord use me your glory. God keep you. Can't nobody worship the Lord like you. My worship is based on who God is. But what's wrapped up into that I'm worshiping and thankful for what he's already done for me. So that means that our worship may be somewhat different, but the common denominator is like that. We are worshiping Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you. To whom shall we go? How long are you going to stay? How long? And there are times the same thing. Any just churches in relationships, uh, marriage, Folks don't go in to stay. If you go in not to stay, nine times out of ten, you're not going to stay. Make up your mind, you're, you're going in. Some of us are, are going to get jobs. We have no intention of staying. When they hired us, Larry, we knew that we weren't going to stay. Many times you've already defeated yourself. One of the things that I'm talking to Jason, just one thing we often talk about is like that how um, people will settle for nothing. If you settle for nothing, you're going to get nothing. But if you reach for the star, I may not reach the stars, but oh, there's so many blessings along the way. What joy. What peace. In a chaotic world, what peace we can enjoy in the presence of the Lord. 
if you don't have peace, his name is Jesus. He'll give you peace. And peace is one of the things, you ain't got to wait to come by and by. If you pray right now, Lord, give me peace. He'll give it to you right now. Joy. You, you don't have to wait till next week. or ne Lord, give it to me. Right now. Lord, remove my bad attitude. Right, You ain't got to wait till next week. Or ne He'll do it. But like Peter, you got to speak it from the heart. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. To whom? Shall we go? I want to extend the opportunity to a Christian discipleship. Somebody, you've been realizing that you need to go to the Lord, you need to come to the Lord. Now is the time to make that decision. I should come as a kind of a baptism, come by letter, and all by Christian experience. However, the Holy Spirit leads you. We invite you to come now at this time. Come as if while the blood is still running warm in my veins. Come while I, I'm still in my right mind. That simply means I know whether I'm walking or whether I'm sitting. This is the point of time. Not next week. Not when you think about it some more, but for you to decide. So many times we're in the process of, well, I'm praying about it. Well, with prayer, you got to put, it, got to put legs on prayer. <clears throat> You've been praying about it, now put some legs on the prayer. And watch God move in your life. But you come now as the Holy Spirit leads you. Strength like no other, strength like no other, it reaches to me. Come on, you are my strength, you are my strength, strength like strength like no Strength like no other, and it reaches to me. I want to say it again. You are my strength. You are my strength. Yes, strength like no other. Strength like no other. In the fullness of your grace. In the fullness of your grace. In the power. In the power of your name. You lift me up. You lift me up. Yes, Lord, you lift me up. You lift me up. I'll say it again. In the fullness of. In the power of in your name. In the power of your name. Lord, you lift me up. You lift me up. Yes, you lift me up. You lift me up. I want to say this. You are my hope. You are my hope. Yes. Yeah. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Say that one again. Lord, you are my hope. You are my hope. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. And it reaches to me. Reaches to me. Come on, In the fullness of your love. In the fullness of your grace. 
in the power in the power of your Lord, name Lord you lift me up you lift me up will the Lord lift you yeah. up yes he will can yes, we get a witness won't the Lord lift, lift you up, up. Won't the Lord be there for yeah. you? Oh, yes, he, he is. He is a strength. Strength like, strength like no, no other. other. Hallelujah. Strength, strength like, like no other. And it reaches to me. Reaches to me. One more time. Lord, you are my strength. Yeah. You are my strength. Hallelujah. Yes, strength like no strength other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other, and it reaches to me. 